Hi, Andrew Andrew here. We're at the Lyceum Theater about to see The Nance. The Nance is not a one-man show. Why do I want to think it's a one-man show? Well, the show supposedly belongs to Nathan Lane. Well, I think any show that Nathan Lane is in should belong to Nathan Lane. However, as his ammunition, he has the words of one of the wittiest writers working on Broadway today. We adore Douglas Carter Bean. He did Xanadu, he did Sister Act, he did uh, Little Dog Cinderella, Little Dog Laugh. He's a great wit and we're looking forward to Beanisms. Beaners. Yeah, we're looking Beaners, forward to Beaners as we like to call them. The show concerns vaudeville in the roaring 30s in which homosexuals could not be out in the open. Like you can't be openly gay, but you could be a gay clown. It's almost like gay blackface. The Nance at the Lyceum Theater. It's intermission, and the story so far... A closeted homosexual who plays a Nance on stage in New York 30s cabaret picks up a trick. It turns out to be more than a trick. It turns out to be an earnest um, companion. It's about the political climate of, of the closeted culture of the time. The politicians are starting to raid the theaters, not just for burlesque and, and nudity, but also for anyone portraying a homosexual on stage. The, the show is divided into two different sections. The first section is backstage, and the other half of the show is what's happening on stage. And that, to me, is the most entertaining part, a time capsule of what vaudeville was like it's a bit in the a, 30s. It's a bit of a history lesson. Nathan Lane is fully committed to this role. In less able hands, the contrast between the onstage life and the offstage life would be more glaring, and I think that the two are blended quite well. Douglas Carter Bean is really trying to explore a lot of issues here. You know, from the, the marketing and everything, I was expecting a sort of gay Gilbert and Sullivan. It's a lot deeper. Than exactly, I it's more complicated. It's more a lot more complex. It's not just about gay politics, it's also about politics as a whole. The first act has ended with a cliffhanger, and we're sort of left to wonder what the fate of our characters will be. Let's go back inside and see second act of the Nance at the Lyceum Theater. The second act becomes much more political, much more dark, and I sort of wish there was more of this political aspect in the first act. I don't know about that, Andrew. I think that they win you over with the glitz and glamour of the first act, and then it, all of a sudden reality comes calling, and you have to deal with the fact that there are these repressive elements in, in society. It's, it's a history lesson for gays, but it's also a history lesson for New Yorkers about what the world was like and, and how things, social mores, shift and change. When Douglas Carter Bean starts to write genuine from the heart and honestly, without any subtext, without any double entendre, I start to wander a little bit. The set was fantastic. I thought there might be some musicality. I wasn't expecting the song and dance routines, which didn't disappoint. Nathan Lane was really an amazing performer. Restrained, smart, funny, witty. My concern is that the theater that it's at has a history of brilliant but canceled productions. Such as Scott's Were Boys. Title of show. A lot of these shows that failed to find their audience but that pushed the boundaries of what Broadway could be. And I really hope that this does not suffer the same fate as those fantastic shows. But I give it a green light. I've got my reservation, so I'm gonna say yellow light. I, I wanted more. I think it could have delivered more. I just wanted more. Love you, Dallas Carter Bean. Love you, Nathan Lane. But a yellow light and a green light for the Nance at the Lyceum Theater. <laughs>